Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Although today we are doing an open AI centric headlines and there may be more than five minutes as there is a lot of news that we have to catch up on from the last couple of days. Starting with the biggest news, reports that GPT-5, which has been codenamed Orion internally, is coming this year by December. The Verge reports that OpenAI plans to launch Orion by December, although other sources say that engineers inside Microsoft are preparing to host Orion on Azure as early as November. This would, of course, be the two-year anniversary of ChatGPT, so it makes it a fitting time. A note on naming, they say that while Orion is seen inside OpenAI as the successor to GPT-4, it's unclear if it will actually call it GPT-5 externally. Another interesting note from The Verge reporting is that unlike most of OpenAI's models, including the last two that have been released, GPT-4.0 and 01, Orion is not going to initially be released through ChatGPT. Instead, it is going to be released through the API first to a select group of company partners. Now, one of the important things here is that 01 was not a bigger model than GPT-4.0. It just took a different approach, which has made it better at certain reasoning tasks. Orion which we might think about as GPT-5, is reportedly a much more advanced model. One OpenAI executive teased it as potentially 100 times more powerful than GPT-4. Back in September, apparently OpenAI researchers threw a happy hour to celebrate finishing training Orion. And around the same time, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman said, I love being home in the Midwest. The night sky is so beautiful. Excited for the winter constellations to rise soon. They are so great. The winter constellation that is most visible in the night sky from around November to February is, of course, Orion. Now, obviously, there are big things riding on this model. OpenAI has, on the one hand, recently closed a huge round of funding at a massive valuation with big plans to convert the nonprofit into a for profit structure. But at the same time, it's coming up on a year of near constant controversy firings, rehirings, executive departures. Now, obviously, investors have a lot of faith in OpenAI's ability to deliver given its $157 billion valuation. But GPT-5 or Orion or whatever it ends up being called has some big shoes to fill. Perhaps the other biggest news from OpenAI this week is that the company is winding down its AGI readiness team. The information reports that Miles Brundage, an OpenAI policy leader focused on safety, announced on Twitter that he would be leaving the company so that he can, quote, have more freedom to publish research and be more independent. The key points that he shares are that, one, he thinks he'll have more impact as a policy reacher and advocate in the nonprofit sector. Two, he argues that, Quote, working at OpenAI is an incredibly high-impact opportunity now more than ever. OpenAI needs employees who care deeply about the mission and who are committed to sustaining a culture of rigorous decision-making about development and deployment. The precedents we set with each decision and launch matter a lot. Three, he left a reminder that his colleagues need to speak up when they disagree with decisions being made by executives. He writes, I think people almost always assume that it's harder and more costly to raise concerns or ask questions than it actually is. OpenAI has a lot of difficult decisions ahead and won't make the right decisions if we succumb to groupthink. Now, Brundage has been with OpenAI for about six years. In a substack, he elaborated on his thoughts around AGI, writing, In short, neither OpenAI nor any Frontier Lab is ready, and the world is not ready. I think that improving Frontier AI safety and security is quite urgent, given the number of companies, dozens that will soon, next few years at most, have systems capable of posing catastrophic risks. There are also difficulties around credible commitments to and verification of safety levels, which further incentivize corner cutting. But lest you think this was all doom and gloom, he also said, I think it's likely that in the coming years, not decades, AI could enable sufficient economic growth that an early retirement at a high standard of living is easily achievable. Before that, there will likely be a period in which it is easier to automate tasks that can be done remotely. He gets philosophical writing, In the near term, I worry a lot about AI disrupting opportunities for people who desperately want work, but I think it's simultaneously true that humanity should eventually remove the obligation to work for a living and that doing so is one of the strongest arguments for building AI and AGI in the first place. The now-defunct AGI readiness team will be distributed to other divisions. A spokesperson for OpenAI said, Brundage's plan to go all in on independent research on AI policy gives him the opportunity to have an impact on a wider scale, and we are excited to learn from his work and follow its impact. We're confident that in his new role, Miles will continue to raise the bar for the quality of policymaking in industry and government. Moving on to the next OpenAI story in this longer than normal headlines, Microsoft and OpenAI are partnering to give news outlets millions of dollars to use AI tools. The grants are split evenly between cash and software credits and are focused on large regional news outlets. The grants will fund a two-year fellow at each outlet to work with them in developing and implementing AI tools. And the initiative is being conducted in collaboration with the LenFest Institute for Journalism, which works to promote local media. Tom Rubin, the head of IP and content at OpenAI, said in a press release, While nothing will replace the central role of reporters, we believe that AI technology can help in the research, investigation, distribution, and monetization of important journalism. A small one, but great for the folks in Europe. 
OpenAI has now rolled out its advanced voice mode to EU users. The announcement pretty surreptitiously. When someone tweeted, any update for us in Europe, they said, well, yes, all plus users in the EU, Switzerland, Iceland, Norway, and Liechtenstein now have access to advanced voice. The company did not say anything else about how their calculus around EU regulations had changed. But as I said, great for European AI users who have access to those features now. Finally, if we have one story about OpenAI executives leaving, we have another about new executives joining. During the Biden years, Chatterjee was credited with helping coordinate the implementation of the CHIPS Act, which authorized roughly $280 billion in spending. OpenAI said that Chatterjee will be tasked with research including, quote, the global economic impacts of building AI infrastructure, insights on longer-term labor market trends, and how to help the current and future workforce harness the benefit of this technology. The other big hire announced this week was Scott Schools as the company's first chief compliance officer. Schools held the same role at Uber from 2018 and was previously the highest-ranking lawyer at the Justice Department. OpenAI finds themselves in a similar position that Uber was in six years ago, needing to keep up with changing legal frameworks in multiple jurisdictions. Che Chang, OpenAI's general counsel, said, Scott's deep expertise will further strengthen our team's ability to deliver beneficial AI technology while continuing to operate with the highest integrity standards and adapting to rapidly evolving regulatory environments. That is going to do it for our very OpenAI-centric headlines today. Next up, the main episode.